Hey, welcome to Help of Christians. I'm Antoinette, and on this channel, I discuss Catholic and Protestant prophecy, and I try to find the common thread that God is speaking to all of his people. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing a lot of different prophecy where God keeps talking about being battle ready. So we know that things are just getting rockier and rockier, more turbulent as the days go on. Um, and, you know, it's taking a toll on our souls, even if we're prayer warriors. This is territory we've never encountered before. And it seems like it's coming at us at every different angle. It's like death by a thousand cuts, right? But God is telling us he has a plan. He will never leave us. And he has uh, marching orders for us. So thanks be to God for that. We'll get into it. But first, let us pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in harmony. May our souls be as one. May our thoughts listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I think I prayed that right from my heart. Um, it's funny because we pray that like every day, sometimes multiple times a day, but for some reason I can't memorize that one. So I always like tell one of my kids, hit it, let's go. <laughs> and they are so good at a young age memorizing it. Um, and if you don't already know what that prayer is, that's a flame of love prayer. Um, it is a prayer given to Elizabeth Kindleman, who is, I believe she's a servant of God at this point. She is in the process of canonization. Um, her works do have the Emperor and that is a powerful battle prayer for this time to blind the demons. So thank you for that. He's already given us tools. We just have to know about them and we know how to know how to use them, right? So that is uh, something to look up. If you don't know already, look up Elizabeth Kindleman, the Flame of Love Prayer, the Flame of Love Rosary. Okay, moving on. So God keeps mentioning we need to be battle ready. Uh, and I have been recently listening a little bit to um, a gentleman named Andrew Whalen. And he has been on Elijah's streams. If you know that platform, that's a very big platform for Protestant prophecy. Lots of different prophets come on there and discuss what God's given them. Um, it's a very, very old ministry. I think it's been around for 20 or more years Um so Steve on there, I feel like is really seasoned at discernment. Um, so if you don't already know what that is, go check that out. But Andrew Whalen was um, taught, he, his specific mission is actually boot camp, basically, for Christians at this time. Um, and God has been giving him dreams and things like that about us entering into battle and uh, boot camp in general, which I'll go on to talk about. Sorry, had to adjust my camera. There's always some sort of interruption. It wouldn't be me if there wasn't some sort of interruption. And the kids are not here. Well, the majority of them are not here right now. So of course the camera is gonna do what it does. Uh, we already know we are supposed to be the church militant, right? That's our job on earth. Our prayers are battle um, weapons, if you will. It's something that um, God has told us will win wars. We've saw it, right, at the Battle of Lepanto. But we kind of get complacent. We're like, yep, prayers all day, every day. Great, right? I've been doing it my whole life. Awesome, right? Or um, you just kind of maybe don't see your results immediately. So you don't realize how powerful they are in the spiritual realm, right? Um, but God is saying, no, I need your prayers now. Don't stop now. Ramp them up now. Um, so we have to do that. So how? How are we going to do that, right? Okay, number one, battle ready is get close to him. Get close to him like never before, right? We've talked about this uh, on many different videos that God keeps saying, Get into scripture like you've never gotten into scripture before. Um, prayer like you've never gotten into prayer before. There are so many opportunities to do that now that we don't have an excuse to say we don't have time, right? Uh, we have so many apps and um, different uh, websites that help us 
pray on the go or help us if we can't remember prayers, things like that, right? Um, I even have in my reminders several times during the day, um, different times that I'm supposed to be praying, right? The Angelus, um, Rosary, things like that throughout the day because I am busy and I forget, right? Um, but that's, again, it's not an excuse, right? We have to do it. So um, that's one thing. Get close to him. Read the scriptures. Something that um, I feel like Though we read the scriptures in Holy Mass all the time, um, I feel like we haven't been taught as a church how to pray with the scriptures if it's not already in a designed prayer. Maybe that's just my own experience, but I know that um, I have uh, thankfully been told um, when I when I listen to some Protestant prophecy and, and in Catholic prophecy that um, you can just take the scripture and just pray it over yourself. So I don't even alter the words. I just literally, um, you know, let God know these are my intentions. I'm praying Psalm 91 because Lord, you said this is my spiritual uh, weapon. And I just pray Psalm 91. And I say, Lord, this is for my myself and my children, my husband and, you know, whoever I'm praying for. And the same thing with Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. That's putting on your spiritual armor every day in prophecy. Catholic and Protestant prophecy, God has said, do that, do that every single day. That's another one. I don't even alter the words. I just pray it as it is. Um, and you know, that's my spiritual armor as God has said. So the scriptures are so powerful. They're God's words, right? They are not empty. They will not return void. Okay. And again, we know we are the church, uh, militant, but I just wanted to mention that, um, Mike Thompson, he is a Protestant prophet. Um, God's been talking to him for a long time about the lion's army. Um, that's what, you know, that's the way that God expresses it to him, the lion's army. So Mike Thompson has a lot to talk about, um, about battling in the heavens, right? So uh, Ephesians 6 says, we don't battle with flesh and blood, but with the principalities in the heavens. Um, that's right. So what does that mean? Um, it's a, it's the spiritual realm that we don't see. Um, so he even just recently put out a book. Um, I, it's in print and I think it's on audible too, um, about battling with your spiritual authority in the heavens. So your, the thought process is you, we're, we're used to battling from, from where we are right here. Um, as you know, just the church militant on earth, right? But what we're supposed to, our mindset is supposed to be, we are with God in heavenly realms. We are seated next to him because we are his heirs, right? So we're supposed to be praying actually from heaven down. And it's definitely, it's like a mindset and it's like a heart change to understand how powerful those prayers really are um, and to pray them with, with deep um, conviction. So that's what he, that's his main, one of his big missions as a prophet. So the Lions Army, Mike Thompson. Um, Diana Larkin, uh, she has a marching orders to, to spread um, her prophetic messages to what God calls with her the Army of Light. So again, there is a battle, uh, the, the battle jargon right there. If you're Catholic, you know we are supposed to be the uh, Militia Immaculata, right? Uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe has a lot of prayer about that. We have been told in many different ways, biblically and prophetically, that we are this army, right? Um, so now we have to um, get a little bit uncomfortable in this prayer. You know, war is not comfortable. It's not just praying the same prayers we've always, um, because we're going to get the same results. The enemy is throwing new, uh, dangerous arrows at us. So we need to hold up new, more powerful shields. Um, and, and maybe a little bit more often we are meant to occupy. Okay. So that word is very well known um, if you're using uh, the NIV version uh, in Luke 19, 13, Jesus tells us to occupy, occupy until I return, right? 
in one of his parables. Um, but in other translations, it's, it's so we are told in Luke 19, 13, in the NIV version of the Bible, the word is occupy. Jesus is telling us the parable of the talents, and he's telling us to occupy until he returns, right? Um, now, there's other translations, of course, and the words are put money, put the money to trade, or put the money to work. So there's something that has to be going on, right? There's transactions that are supposed to be going on with the talents he gives us. Um, so I like that NIV version because um, it's much more militant um, to occupy until he returns. Well, a uh, military that occupies, they are the force to be reckoned with in that area, right? Um, so when you're, when you kind of put it like, oh, it's money that just needs to be transactions. Um, you just need to make, uh, you know, double your profit kind of as the, um, translations are read. That's nice, right? We do transactions all day long. I can do transactions at the store. Um, I can put money in the bank. There's no resistance there, right? But when you say occupy like a militant army, occupy this land until he returns. There's another level of uh, responsibility, right? There's another level of transaction that needs to be going on, right? Um, so I kind of like that version better. You do the Bible study and discern on your own. Uh, but I think that that is important. We need to stop being comfortable. It's time to really stand up and be the militant and occupy, right? Um, so how do we do that? We have to go to boot camp. Now, 2020, was that not a boot camp? 2021, 2022, right? <sighs> Unfortunately, lots of prophecy. God has already said, it's not going to slow down. It's just going to get busier and more confusing. Um, again, death by a thousand cuts. It's, it's meant to exhaust us. But the good thing is God, it, Holy Spirit is the refreshing water. So when we do it with him, he is right next to us. He is, um, you know, he's the commander next to us. He sees the battle plans before the enemy can even throw the arrows at us. And Holy Spirit is filling us with refreshing water when we do it with him, right? But we do have to go to boot camp. We do have to know what to do. Um, so 2020 was like mini boot camp. 2021. 2024. 2024 might be entering us into a uh, next level boot camp. And why is it boot camp? Because this is again not going to stop. This is going to continue for years. Um, and so we have to learn from it. We have to grow above it. And um, things are going to keep getting, we've talked about this, as things um, keep getting more crazy in the world, we are meant to be the light for the rest of the world. You and I, if you've been on this channel for a while, you're already aware of a lot of this stuff going on. Uh, it's exhausting, you know? I, I know I've been kind of at this for uh, a few years, um, just really understanding how chaotic things are, um, how deep evil is entrenched in our lives. And um, it is tiring, it is. It's like, can we get a break, right? But there are so many beautiful blessings when you're doing it with the Lord. So thanks be to God for that. Okay, so now it's time for boot camp. Um, we have to occupy, but we need to know how to occupy. So 2024 is boot camp. Um, Andrew Whalen, one of his dreams was that he was at boot camp with another prophet. Um, and it was uh, basically what he, he gathered as his uh, discernment of the dream is 2024 is going to be like boot camp. We're going to face another kind of issue issue like 2020 where people were picking sides. You had to decipher what was true and what was false and who was going to be on what side. Um, unfortunately, that's what the devil tries to do. He is the great divider, right? He brings in the dis uh, the disruption in, um, you know, uh, families, in workplaces, and whatever it is. Um, to divide us because we are weak when we are divided, right? So we're hitting another level of that soon. 
Um, <laughs> we're getting another level of that. So it's not the time to be divided. Um, especially, you know, this channel, I feel like God really, really has been talking to me for a while um, about bringing together all the Christian denominations. Um, one of the very first prophets that I was really listening to for a long time was Vasula Raiden, and one of her big missions is to re uh, reunite the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church to have one Easter um, because it hurts Jesus that we're separated on Easter on that big feast um, and we're separated for other silly, silly things, right? Um, so that's a big thing, bringing those, those um, communities together, no division. But I feel like, and you'll see, I'll read it in just a minute, this is the time also to be connected with uh, the Protestant brothers and sisters that there is so much silly things that keep us apart, but we are united with Christ and, and he really needs us all to have each other's back at this point. Um, so that's another level of spiritual maturity of understanding that though we may worship differently, we still love the same Jesus, right? We still love the same father. Um, and he cannot have us all divided and win the battles like he wants to, right? I mean, he uses us. Of course he could do it, but you know what I'm saying, right? He needs us united. We're stronger together. Um, so that's another thing. Uniting, um, being, uh, being able to believe in yourself in your prayer puts another level of power in your prayer. So pray for faith. Um, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief and pray for boldness. You know, um, I'm, I'm doing this encounter class, uh, encounter ministries. And just, just about two, three weeks ago, actually, when I was preparing for this um, video, we were going through being bold that like the Holy Spirit has put you in this position um, because he needs you there. We're so used to it in this world. Oh, that's not my problem. You know, I'll mind my own business kind of thing. But uh, I feel like God, the Holy Spirit was really showing me, um, especially like during that week when I had uh, just life encounters that no, you're in that position. You're seeing those things happen for a reason. Now, what are you going to do about it? You know? Um, so anyway, pray on that because why, why are you there? Why are you witnessing this thing? Right. And you know, not everything is our business, but everything is God's business. So everybody's going to experience that differently. Pray into that. Um, but definitely be bold. Uh, be bold in the Lord and where he has put you and the people that he has put you around because they need you. And especially when things get crazy coming up, they're really going to need a sound mind that knows what's going on uh, and is, you know, level headed. Um, <clears throat> so again, another thing for boot camp is um, learning discipline, learning discipline, stopping bad habits, right? Um, so that was where some big things that Andrew ha at Whalen had in his dream about boot camp. Some of the th the themes that he got from it, um, that we are maybe in a, um, we're in, again, used to maybe some of the prayers that we're used to doing and the way that we're used to worshiping. Um, and there's some things that God's going to have to prune. And I did a video about this a few months back. Um, I think it was Liberty from Spirit Mo Ministry. Um, she's had quite a few prophecies about pruning, right? So that's part of this boot camp experience is that there are things that can't go with us uh, well, where we're going, right? Um, there are bad habits when you go into boot camp that you have to get rid of. Um, there are new habits you have to learn, right? New postures that you have to uh, learn and uh, new ways that you're going to interact with people now that you are formally in a military, right? Formally as a soldier. So those are things that we have to make sure we're not letting, you know, like a spirit of legalism, uh, a lot of Protestant terminology, they'll say a spirit of religion. They mean a spirit of legalism holding us back and saying, no, Lord, you can't do this new thing that I've never seen before. Um, so that, again, is going to be a level of maturity and discernment saying, God, is this you doing, doing a new thing, right? Or am I being deceived? 
Um, but he has said many times in prophecy, not only is he going to be doing new things, but his wording has been what you what we've seen basically at the old Exodus, right? The last, the first Exodus. This is a, going to be a new Exodus, the second Exodus, and it will be greater. So imagine all the things that they had to encounter when they were, you know, faced with, I got to get up and go and get out of Egypt. Well, why were they in the desert for so long? Because God had to get Egypt out of them. They wanted to, you know, they were like, oh, well, we were going to, uh, we were fine in Egypt. We at least had fruits and vegetables. You know, what is this manna from heaven, right? They weren't seeing the miracle and the change that God was bringing. They were complaining, right? So um, this is going to be greater than that. And there's going to, it's going to hurt. Even for us who are awake, who have been uh, trying to lean on him, he's going to show us that there's hurting that needs to come. Bad habits need to leave. New things are going to come that might not be comfortable at first. Um, so again, this is discernment time. Um, this is bringing it to him, not going to the news, um, not going to, you know, some of, sometimes even people that we've trusted in the past, um, they might not be there. They might not be where you and I are, where we're understanding that God's doing a new thing. So it's best to go to him, bring it to him. Um, and, and make sure that, you know, you've had that conversation with him and you've asked him for confirmation on certain things. Um, and, and it's going to be different for all of us. You know, what I'm going to experience could be different for you. Um, so it has to kind of be vague like this, but uh, nonetheless, he's already warned us. I'm doing a new thing. Prepared. Be prepared. And so and another thing about why we're Going through this boot camp in 2024, we've already heard, um, be it in the secular world, but also in prophecy, that there is an agenda 2030, right? So that's in the future. So our boot camp now is going to be preparing us for that. Um, and then there's been quite a few prophecies that have talked about 2027. Um, and again, that has been a mix of, whoa, 2027, and oh my goodness, 2027. So um, I'm not sure where to go on that, but if we're with God, it's only going to be woe, right? Or woe in a good way. Um, so anyway, this is our time to build up our endurance, our skills, and new habits, and prune out the old. Um, idolatry is another thing that Andrew Whalen was telling us uh, that, that the boot camp is going to get rid of. And he said, you know, what is idolatry? Idolatry is whatever you've made, uh, whatever's in the way of you going to God, right? Um and I have this love-hate relationship with my cell phone, right? Um, I do everything on my cell phone. I go to God on my cell phone with prayers, and I listen to prayers, and I have this great channel with y'all. Um, but at the same time, am I scrolling before I'm praying? Praying? Am I scrolling before I um, read my Bible? Um, or am I going to open up a prayer, and I hit something else, and it brings me somewhere else, and I'm, you know... <laughs> guilty. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm repenting on that. I'm working on that. Um, I'm trying, but the, those are things, you know, and, and another thing with the electronics, you know, um, in the future, we've been told the electronics are, are not going to work as they should. Um, they're not going to be welcomed into arcs of safety. Um, so, hey, that's the pruning I'm going to have to go through, but yours might be different. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over a prophecy from this, the seer Lorena from South America. This was given to her October 19th, 2023, and I'm just going to read bits and pieces of it, but um, it definitely talks about um, war coming, and this is from the Virgin Mary. Um, so, it, so she says, many nations will disappear for their evil and others will be harshly purified. The purification has already begun and the beginnings of the tribulation has already been announced and the world still sleeps. Do not wait for misfortune, misfortunes to knock at your doors. When the angel of justice passes by your homes, you should have, should have prepared yourselves beforehand by marking your homes, your hearts and the souls with the lamb, blood of the lamb. And how you will do this, you will bless with the blood of my son, your whole being and that of your families by covering yourselves with it and protect your homes by placing salt, oil and exercise water in the corners of your houses, doors and windows. You must be attentive to the signs of the time so that while awake, 
you may become aware of the evil plans of evil and be able to confront them with the help of God. If you trust in God, living a life in the divine will, you will be protected wherever you are, together with your families, from any threat to your physical and spiritual integrity. And you will have the certainty that the power of God has done his work in your lives. So here, um, I would refer you to the Bible, the um, book of Daniel, and the Apocalypse, where we're talking about signs of the times. Uh, it goes over what those signs of the times will be. So she goes on to say, You will see great miracles in your lives if you have faith and abandon yourselves in the arms of the Father. Therefore, I ask you to be like children in the arms of your Father, who caresses, who, I'm sorry, who cares for you, guides you, and protects you. So, like I said before, pray for faith. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, help my faith to grow. Um, she goes on to say, my children, prepare yourselves for your missions for the battle, which is very strong. Therefore, I ask you to prepare your souls for this bloody battle with prayers, fasting, and penance. I call you to unity with the Most Holy Trinity through the fusion of your souls and hearts with this. And she goes on to say how to achieve this unity with the Most Holy Trinity. You need to ask for a pure heart and God will mold your hearts. He will forge them like clay in the hands of the potter. It will be painful but necessary because without pain, there is no transformation. Pain makes human beings stronger and more capable of facing life situations. It gives the human being an identity, an identity that only God can give to the souls forged in pain to make them clean and resplendent in his presence. So let yourselves be molded by the arms of the Father to be able to shine like shining pearls. So again, there is that same theme of cleansing and the cleansing is painful. Um, it's going to be painful. There's some relationships that maybe will be broken up before because of it. Um, pleasures that we've enjoyed are maybe going to be gone. Um, and it's definitely going to make us fall on our knees in prayer. So um, our, our goal here, at least in my brain, is how do we face these hard times but not be in complaint and um, lack thanksgiving like the Israelites did when they were leaving Egypt, right? Um, because that was their main punishment is that they didn't see the, the great stuff that God was, was doing. They were, woe is me, right? Um, she goes on to say, therefore, therefore strive to fulfill your specific missions that God gave to each one of you personally. Do not be a stumbling block for your brothers and sisters, but a bridge to reach God. So I only ask you to enter into the unfathomable mysteries of my son, Jesus Christ, to understand his crucifixion and redemption. And by living the agony of my son on Calvary, you can grow more spiritually, feeling his sufferings and pains with your hearts. You will renew your hearts and souls and soften your hearts with the agony and sufferings of my son through his passion lived by the apostles of the last time. So again, here it is. We're so used to saying... Um, pray the rosary, but how much are we really entering into each um, mystery and not just making it a habit, right? Um, and that we have so many good prayers, not just the rosary, but we have the Divine Mercy Chaplet and we have the Stations of the Cross, right? Um, so we should be offering up this agony. Um, any agony that you experience in your day, you can unite it with the Lord and offer it up, right? That gets kind of like, oh, Catholics offering it up. But there is a reason Mother Church has showed us how to do this. We just have to put our minds and our hearts back in the right place to say we can unite this little suffering with the Lord. He will take anything little or big, right? He wants everything from us. Um, she, our mother goes on to say, my son can rest a little from so much pain and outrages through the victim souls. Everything can be lessened and some events reduced or canceled. So offer yourselves as victim souls. This work is very necessary in these last times since you will be able to lessen the events with your life of surrender and oblation to heaven. 
Follow my instructions and advice. Do not get discouraged, nor forget everything recommended in this message that my son asked me to give you. Um, and she goes on to say, you have a weapon par excellence, which is the rosary, ready for battle soldiers. <laughs> and the very last thing that she tells us, I call on you to integrate with your brothers for your spiritual growth. I call on you to integrate with your other brothers for your sp spiritual growth. Okay, who are your other brothers? When I read this, I immediately thought those that we, uh, that are not specifically Catholic, right? Um, I call on you to integrate with your other brothers. So what, so what does integrate mean? To make in whole or bring all parts together, to unify, right? So what parts are broken off? Well, those that aren't, uh, you know, we have the Catholics, we have the Orthodox, we have 40,000 whatever Protestant churches, right? God is calling us. We need to come back together. Um, and step by step, we will all be, just as prophecy has said, we will all be one in the future. But um, I think at this point, we need to, again, try and let go of some of that legalism and see how we can unite um, discern on that, pray on that, because, you know, we do have, um, guidance from the church, but sometimes that guidance, um, is, you know, this big and a theologian will make it this big, right? So do your own due diligence, read the catechism, um, and go to him, go to the Lord for what that really means. I hope you understand that too. <laughs> So moving on, um, another prophetic insight from Andrew Whalen. Um, he was on a plane and he said he hit some serious turbulence and he just started praying in the spirit. Um, and he, you know, he knew the Lord was with him and that they would get through it. Um, but there was, he said it was like the worst turbulence he's ever experienced flying before. Um, but God, as they came out of it, God said, showed him that in this shaking, um, he wasn't just experiencing the shaking just to for God to say, here's a prophetic word. God was saying, actually, this turbulence you're feeling, there is something going on in the heavens right now. Um, and the signs, of, first of all, the Lord has said the signs of the earth are something that we should take notice of, right? We've seen the blood moons, um, volcanoes, um, things in the sky, right? And so even the turbulence is some sort of warfare in the heavens. So that's something to think about. That's like kind of profound. Um, but God was also saying, look, in that turbulence, you got closer to me. He started praying in the spirit, right? Um, and he was affecting that turbulence, whatever that prayer he was praying in the spirit was affecting that warfare. Um, and then he came out of it and it was smooth sailing afterward. So there's kind of like multiple levels there. It was like, whoa, I'm still kind of reeling from that. Um, but we can affect all those things that we can't even see. So, and then another thing that God, uh, God kind of revealed to Andrew is that because there's gonna be turbulence everywhere, this is there's gonna be increased prayer everywhere. Um, and that's going to be part of a revival. We've seen little bits and pieces of that revival coming. Um, but there's going to be a big, big revival. And again, how are we going to say, well, those people really love Jesus and they're having a two-week straight revival, but I don't want any of that. I mean, if you're having a serious Holy Spirit-filled prayer revival, I kind of want some of that action, right? Um, so again, spiritual maturity, bring it to the Lord. Um because I, I know I want every part of all the, the manna from heaven he is bringing to us. So part of that unity, I wanted to bring up Zechariah 10, 5. Now, I didn't mark in my notes if this was something that Andrew had brought up or if I just came across it as I was praying, but here it is. <laughs> um, together, they will be like warriors in battle, trampling their enemy into the mud of the streets. They will fight because the Lord is with them and they will put the enemy horsemen to shame. Oh, I want that for all of us. Let's put the enemy to shame because we are battling together and not pointing fingers at each other and not being legalistic. Um, Holy Spirit, just bring a spirit of unity to all of us, especially everyone that's watching this video right now. Cast out any fear 
or anxiety of, of uniting with our brothers and sisters in prayer. And let us be bold to unite where you guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm wrapping up soon. I know I try not to make these videos too long, but here I am making it another long video. <laughs> um, Psalm 24. So we're in, we're go, entering into the 24th year. Um, and again, here's another thing that I pulled up Psalm 24 because one of the prophets had said, you know, this year, 23, Psalm 23, here's Psalm 24 coming into next year. Now that was several months ago before I even was kind of looking at this battle ready theme, but it goes into being in battle. So this is uh, Psalm 24. I'm going to read verses eight through 10. Who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors. The King of glory may come in. Who is he, the King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. So here we are. Let's lean on that. Let's lean on uh, in 2024. Our King is the King of glory and he is battle ready and he wants us battle ready. Um, so those are two scriptures to kind of keep with you. Uh, and so one other thing that Andrew Whalen, um, he was on uh, actually Elijah's dreams and he kind of went through like a couple of different prophetic ish, um, prophetic situations and dreams he had. Um, and they were all kind of geared toward this being battle ready and boot camp kind of thing. And he said, one of the dreams he had, um, he was, he was encountering people and he can see the light of Christ in them, but he could tell if the, they were living off of the light of Christ of like a spiritual high kind of that they had years ago or those people who were experiencing a spiritual high, like a, you know, a new glory fest, I guess, in the, in the recent times. Um, so think about that. Like, okay, when I was feeling really close to the Lord, was it 20 years ago? And I've just continued since then. And I haven't had like a jolt or um, is this something that I'm always seeking? I'm seeking almost like an adrenaline junkie, <laughs> seeking another encounter with the Lord that's really profound. Um, I know I'm kind of there. I'm really feeling um, uh, every encounter I've had with him, especially after, and I love this word encounter, um, especially after I've started this encounter ministry school and really learned to really hear God's voice Every encounter is just such a spiritual high and whether it's been for me personally or if God has given me something to share with someone else and it's hit them profoundly, man, it's just amazing. It's amazing to see that and um, I'm, I'm hungry for that and I never want that light to be 20 years old or even five years old. So where is your fire now? Is it an old fire that needs to be reignited? ask him for that. Ask him, Lord, give me a new encounter that is just going to jolt my spirit um, and and keep giving them to me. Keep being um, a fire that's lit for the Lord, right? An army of light we are supposed to be as Diana Larkin was given. So, and again, with that whole theme of the boot camp is that America will be entering into um, war times, right? Be it spiritual, um, political, whatever it is. Um, and God has said America is not going to go down. He is um, going to keep us close to him. Um, uh, you know, the enemy is not going to, to win over America. Um, but we are going to be going through this time and it is going to be a fight. So the words that actually Diana Larkin were, were, was given in a prophecy, it said, um, in times of darkness, we are to be the strength of the nation. I mean, that's, that's amazing. That's a heavy load, but we are put here for a time such as this, right? So to go along with that word from a Diana Larkin, now in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's from Romans 8 37. So we are conquerors and he is battle ready with us, right? So I want to give you one more scripture verse, Revelation 21 7. Those who are victorious will inherit all this and I will be their God and they will be my children. 
So uh, we are being victorious with the Lord and our inheritance. The cool thing is he's told us for us in this generation, we're going to see some of that inheritance from our generations past given back to us because we're in that battle against the enemy to take back what he has stolen. So that's awesome. And then obviously we'll have a great inheritance in heaven too. So be blessed by all that. Take all these scriptures, write them down somewhere and just keep them for your like 2024 outlook. So thank you for listening. Thank you for checking this video out. Uh, please pray through all of this and take it to God for discernment. But um, I just ask that you would Please like, share, subscribe, all those things, because you know this channel is frozen. Um, they put a governor on here. I'm not allowed to grow because I talk about things that uh, will take them down in the end. <laughs> so thank you for all those that already do that. Um, God bless you all.